PAP screening guidelines put forward by ASCCP and later on revised by ACOJ in 2013 say that any lady who is 21 years of age, irrespective of the age at which she had her first intercourse, she should be starting her PAP screening. From 21 till 29 years of age, it has to be three-yearly screening. If it is combined with co-testing with HPV, then the three-yearly screening can be taken up to five years. But 21 to 29 years, we do not recommend co-testing because that is a time when HPV keeps coming and going. After 29 years means after 30 years, till the age of 65, she can come for three-yearly pap screening or it can be a co-testing along with pap, it can be HPV and that can be a five-yearly interval. Patients who are above 65 and they do not have any past history of CIN, the screening can stop. But if the patient is HIV positive, then instead of the three yearly screening, the screening has to be done every one yearly. And in such patients, you cannot stop screening after 65 years of age. But that's a big question mark whether it should be followed or not. Patients who have had prior treatment for CIN or CA cervix should be under surveillance for at least 20 years. Patients who have had hysterectomy, they do not have a uterus or a cervix inside and it came out to be a benign disease, then do, they do not need any further pap screening. A patient who has had hysterectomy for a high-grade lesion, HSIL, in that case, vaginal cuff pap smear has to be done every six months for the first two years and after that, it has to be done every three years for the next 20 years. Patients who have had HPV vaccination should also be following the same screening schedule as the other general population. WHO screening for resource poor countries like India, WHO says that even though ACCP is recommending age as 21 to start pap smear, in countries like India, we can start at 30 years of age. For HIV positive women, we can start at 25 years of age. Screening can be stopped at 50 years of age instead of 65 because it's a resource poor country, provided the last two screenings were negative. WHO recommends two approaches to such patients, C and treat or C triage and treat. In C and treat, you are basically diagnosing the patient with the help of visual inspection or HPV DNA and you are treating the patient there and then on the basis of just one test. In C triage and treat, you are basically checking for two tests. So first test, if it has come back positive, then you send her back for the another test. If both are positive, then you treat her. So that is how you are basically saving the resources. In overpopulated countries and resource poor countries, it is difficult for triaging the patients and to follow the patients. So see and treat approach is good in the rural setup when you don't know whether the patient is going to come back or not. After treatment in the see and treat approach, she had to come back after one year for a repeat testing. In the second approach, if you are using PAP as a screening test, if the report is ASCUS, below ASCUS is nothing to be done. If it is ASCUS, then you have to send the patient for HPV DNA. If that is positive, you do a colposcopy. If that is negative, you can just forget about it. Now, if the patient is having beyond ASCUS, the report is beyond ASCUS, means it is HSIL. In that case, you have to send her for direct colposcopy. If in the second approach, HPV DNA has been used as a primary test and that comes back positive. If it is positive, then definitely you have to check whether it's a high risk or a low risk. If it's high risk, she has to go for a colposcopy. If it's a low risk, you can go for a VIA. If acetovite areas are seen, then you can send her for colposcopy. Similarly, if the HPV DNA was negative in the very beginning, then you don't need to send her for 5 yearly screening. You can simply send her for 5 to 10 yearly screening. But if she's HIV positive, then instead of 1 yearly screening, you can send her for 3 to 5 yearly screening just to save the resources in resource poor countries. So that is all you need to know about the new WHO guidelines of CIN. Thank you.